In the second half of the 15th century, England was in a constant state of war, with the houses of York and Lancaster fighting the length of England over the rights to the throne. But one king would stand out more than most for his controversial reign. This is the story of Richard III. Richard was born on the 2nd of October 1452 at Frothlinghay Castle, the same castle that Mary Queen of Scots was later executed. He was the 11th of 12 children of Richard, 3rd Duke of York and Cecily Neville, and the youngest to survive infancy. Richard's childhood coincided with the beginning of the War of the Roses. The Yorkists supported his father and opposed the regime of Henry VI, while the Lancastrians were loyal to the crown. In 1459, Richard's father and the Yorkists were forced to flee England. Richard and his older brother George were placed in the custody of their aunt, Anne Neville. At the age of eight, Richard's father and elder brother, Edmund, Earl of Rutland, were killed at the Battle of Wakefield on the 30th of December, 1460. After the Yorkist defeat, Richard and George were sent to the Low Countries. Richard returned to England following the defeat of the Lancastrians at the Battle of Towton and participated in the coronation of his elder brother, Edward IV, on the 28th of June, 1461. Richard was soon after named Duke of Gloucester and made both a Knight of the Garter and a Knight of the Bath. Several years of his childhood was spent at Midlam Castle under the tutelage of his cousin Richard Neville, 16th Earl of Warwick, or as history knows him, the Kingmaker. It was under his cousin's watchful eye that Richard trained as a knight, and it was during his adolescence that he developed a sideways curvature of the spine. As the relationship between the King and Warwick became strained, Edward opposed the marriage between his brother George and Warwick's daughter Isabel. Despite the King forbidding the match, the two married and Warwick defected to the Lancastrian side. Richard remained loyal to Edward and went into exile in 1470, only to return to England the following year. After the Yorkist victories at the Battle of Barnet and Tewkesbury in 1471, Edward IV was restored to the throne. On the 12th of July 1472, Richard married Anne Neville, the younger daughter of Warwick the Kingmaker, who was killed at the Battle of Barnet. She had previously been married to Edward of Westminster, the son of Henry VI, who was killed at the Battle of Tewkesbury. Richard proved his worth as a military commander, taking part in the invasion of Scotland in 1482, which with a force of 20,000 men, he was able to recapture Berwick upon Tweed. Richard governed the North, where he was highly regarded. Richard's marriage to Anne brought him into conflict with his brother George, who had now reconciliated with Edward. Their dispute was over Warwick's lands, as both were married to the Kingmaker's daughters. The following year, Richard was rewarded all the Neville lands in the north of England. It was from this point that George fell from the King's favour, his discontent coming to a head in 1477 when, following the death of Isabel, he was denied the marriage to Mary of Burgundy. George was later charged with treason and executed, but unlike popular acclaim, there is no evidence of Richard's involvement of George's conviction or execution. On the death of his brother Edward IV, Richard was named Lord Protector of the Realm, and his nephew Edward V proclaimed King. Richard assumed his role and left his base in Yorkshire. On the 29th of April 1483, Richard met up with Anthony Woodville, Edward's maternal uncle, at Northampton. Anthony Woodville and his entourage were arrested and Richard rode to Stony Stratford, where he took possession of Edward. Richard escorted the King to London, entering the city on the 4th of May. Edward was first accommodated in the Bishop's apartments, then moved to the Royal Apartments of the Tower of London, 
where the kings customarily waited their coronation. On hearing of her brother's arrest, the Dowager Queen, Elizabeth Woodville, fled to the sanctuary of Westminster Abbey, along with her children, most prominently Richard, Duke of York. Richard acted swiftly, and at a council meeting at the Tower of London, he had Lord Hastings dragged out and executed for having conspired against him with the Woodvilles. Having little choice, the Dowager Queen agreed to hand over the Duke of York so that he might attend his brother's coronation, which was planned for the 22nd of June. It was Robert Stillington, the Bishop of Bath and Wells, who informed Richard of Edward IV's marriage to Elizabeth of Woodville being invalid, due to Edward's earlier union with Eleanor Butler, thus making Edward V and his siblings illegitimate. On Sunday 22nd of June, a sermon was preached outside St Paul's Cathedral, declaring Edward IV's children bastards and Richard the rightful king. The citizens and nobles of London drew up a petition asking Richard to assume the throne, which he accepted on 26th of June. Richard was crowned King of England at Westminster Abbey on the 6th of July 1483. The princes, who were still lodged in the royal residence of the Tower of London, were seen less and less and completely disappeared from sight after the summer of 1483. After his death, Richard was accused of having the princes in the tower murdered, most notably by Thomas More and in Shakespeare's play. More modern theories have been suggested, but the facts around the prince's disappearance remains unknown, though it is most likely that Richard ordered their murder to secure the throne. Once crowned, Richard and his queen set out on a royal progress, during this journey through the country, the King and Queen endowed King's College and Queen's College at Cambridge University and made grants to the church. He also founded the College of Arms and instituted what later became known as the Court of Requests, a court to which poor people could apply for their grievances to be heard. Richard's short reign was successful, though in October 1483, an unsuccessful revolt broke out, which was led by staunch allies of Edward IV and Richard's former ally, Henry Stafford, Duke of Buckingham. Buckingham proposed that Henry Tudor should return from exile, take the throne and marry the eldest daughter of Edward IV, Elizabeth. Buckingham raised a substantial force and hoped to link up with other conspirators, but a storm hampered his efforts and Richard was able to defeat the revolt. Buckingham tried to escape in disguise but was discovered and turned in. He was convicted of treason and beheaded in Salisbury. Richard might now have believed his reign was secure, with the revolt crushed and Henry Tudor fleeing. But on the 9th of April 1484, tragedy struck when Richard's only legitimate child, Edward of Middleham, suddenly died. Richard was at Nottingham when he received news of the death of his son and was said to have gone mad from grief. Queen Anne then died on the 16th of March 1485, aged just 28. Richard now had no allies and no heir and across the channel, Henry Tudor was preparing for the decisive engagement that would decide the fate of England. This decisive engagement took place on the 22nd of August 1485 at the Battle of Bosworth Field. Richard, though his forces outnumbered Henry Tudor's, was defeated when Thomas Stanley betrayed him and declared for Henry Tudor. Accounts note that Richard fought bravely, killing Henry's standard bearer and almost killing Henry himself before being pulled off his horse and brutally killed. His naked body was then tied to a horse and carried to Leicester where it was buried at Greyfriars Church. The exact location of Richard's resting place was lost 
due to over 400 years of development after the church was closed down during the Reformation. But in 2012, Richard's remains were rediscovered and now rest in Leicester Cathedral. Richard III sparks heated debate amongst the historians today about his character and is beyond doubt one of England's most controversial kings. He was the last king to die in battle and his defeat and death at the Battle of Bosworth Field was the last decisive battle of the War of the Roses and it marked the end of the Middle Ages in England.